Hey, welcome. We're live. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. I'm Sherry Reichert Ballou, author of Say It Now. And we are here for the Mango Publishing Author Panel. And this topic and these two beautiful women who are with me, Kim and Sue, are my favorite, favorite people, my favorite topic. Mm -hmm. We're looking at aging zestfully and gratefully and gracefully and whatever other like endings you want to put on that. Um, not fighting it, we're embracing the joy of aging. And so welcome, Kim and Sue. Sue, why don't we start with you and just whatever you want to tell us by way of introduction. Okay, um, I'm Sue Patton Foley. I am, I am the expert of this panel, at least in terms of experience and years <laughs> in, in the aging thing. I'm 83 and um, when I was 45, I think, I just really sort of stumbled into writing. I, I was, the muse got a hold of me and, and I couldn't not write my first book. And then I fell in love with it. It's a, it's a very, very much a, a path that I didn't think about or plan and have just loved. So, and one of the things I love is this stuff. So. <laughs> And just before I have Kim jump in, Sue, thank you. And Lisa was listening and she calls it artful aging, which I love. Nice. That's nice. beautiful, Lisa. Thanks nice. for chiming in with that. Oh, and look, I see Brenda's here. Let's let's bring on Brenda. Oh, Brenda. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Hi. Good to see you. And hello, Liz Marie. We see you out there. Um, <coughs> so Brenda, Sue just introduced herself and I can... I just always celebrate when Sue gives us her age, you know, that you're 83 and you're, you're just so full of vitality and talk about zest. You are, you are our poster child for, for this. So <laughs> that's good. Good. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. So Kim, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here and I'm really excited to, that to participate and talk with Sue about this. Yeah. You want oh, sorry. Help? Introduction. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. I'm Kim Colgrove. I'm the author of Mindfulness for Warriors, which doesn't have anything to do with aging, except for that it really is a, a lot about self-care, which is an important component of aging. Um, but I'm just really excited to have this conversation because I'm in, I'm 56, I'll be 57 in June. So I'm moving through my mid fifties and I'm realizing that, um, I want to be completely different than I've ever been because, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of introspection right now and realizing that so much of my adult life has really been centered around other people. And um, it, it's brand new to me to think about, you know, put, putting myself first and, you know, cause I was a wife and a mom and had a job and like all the things. So uh, it's, it's been an interesting introspective, uh, road for me. And I've had to call myself, honestly, on some of my own BS. So I'm looking forward to this conversation today. <laughs> I love this. And I should just say that the that this started, I think, Kim, because it may have been after I did a Facebook Live with Sue about zestful aging. And I think I was posting about it because it's one of my very favorite topics right now, like, really. And I think you you started commenting and we got we got onto a back and forth about, you know, all of this, like, no more anti-aging. Let's age, you know, let's, mm -hmm. age, you know, mm -hmm. so, and welcome Brenda, publisher of Mango Publishing with your beautiful curly hair today. <laughs> yes. yes, I I did. I curled my hair for heart wisdom. That's how important <laughs> it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> did you want to say anything about? Yeah, I, I do. Um, because like, I think it was like a couple of heart wisdoms ago, I was talking about my mom who's like 95. But I will say that like, when I was in, I think it was in my like, my 30s, uh, I just noticed that my mom, like, um, sort of like, it seemed like she was getting smarter as like she was aging and then has continued. I mean, I, I, I thank you. Uh, universe, mother nature, uh, goddesses and gods that like have, have kept my mom here and like sharp as a tack and, and healthy and everything. 
but I remembered I was talking to the talking like in, you know, way back then when I noticed like my mom is like, seems to be getting smarter, not just wiser. She's getting wiser, but smarter too. And then somebody like to uh, mention to me a book that said that, I mean, I hope I'm just going to go there. I think heart wisdom can take it, but that women (laughs) after menopause, like actually that can happen that like, I guess the part of the brain that is concerned about like, you know, childbearing and all this and that, like that, like that is, is freed up to think about other things. And that it can, it is a phenomena that can happen to men, premenopause and menopausal women. And I remembered when I, and then I did read that and, and uh, cause they referred me to a book and I read it. Um, I think it was Dr. Christine something, something. But anyway, and I just remembered thinking, I want to be like that. And I think that's the zestful aging too, when like you view it as like a benefit and that like yes. you're, you know, it's an opening up to more understanding, knowledge, depth, who knows? Right. And even more, I hope, thank you, Brenda, for that. And, and, and it's like, and I'm heading into 60, I'll be 59 this year. And like Kim, I've just been thinking a lot about, you know, aging and, and my hope is that also becoming more mobile, you know, becoming, you know, more creative, like more everything instead of having, you know, limiting beliefs about what aging is going to bring, you know, and, and what do I need to do in order to, to age with that kind of um, added energy, for instance. So There's lots of places that we can go today and I'm super excited. I also just want to say hi, Krishna's watching and Jean who is stepping into 81 fully. And I know Jean, she is also just vibrant and full of vitality. And uh, so welcome everyone. And before, I know that, that Sue, you brought us something to read to us. Before we do that, I have a question I want to ask each of you while, while we're starting, which is fill us in on what you've done to this point that is helping you age zestfully, gratefully. Um, So Sue, why don't we start with you? Okay. Well, as I, um, as I told you guys before we we started, I, I know the date even on August 12th, 2022, I gave up insistence and resistance. And there were reasons I did that. And, um, and it has just made a tremendous difference. Um, insisting on that I knew right, even though I often do. But, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, and also, and the resistance, it's like, I realized, I mean, I've, I've written about resistance for years and years, and I've really, really talked and tried, but this time I did. And it has made... I'm getting kind of teary. It has made a huge difference. It's like, I, I've said for years that resistance magnifies pain, but I wasn't really aware of how much it did until I needed to just really give up the thing I was resisting the most and the changes I was resisting the most. Because part of what happens in aging is change happens and, and, uh, I've, I've never been one who just said, yay, bring it on. Um, it's, um, so the changes in my husband, the changes in me, um, that has just freed me and him to go ahead and move on the way we need to do and, and take care of ourselves, me especially. And we'll talk about that later. I think we're, planning to talk about self-care and stuff so we are but sue can i just ask you one clarifying question can you give us like an example say in your day-to-day life of what what giving up that resistance and insistence what does it look like you know i i i'm not going to give you the example i just i just don't feel it's appropriate okay um Okay, I will, I will do just, just one, and it's, a, it's very minuscule in terms of, of emotional um, baggage and stuff, but it, but it is a truism. Um, it's just not okay now for my husband to travel. 
It just doesn't work. So, and and we we enjoyed that together. Mm-hmm. So, um, and and what and when I was still stuck in the sort of what I thought couples do, you know, here's what couples do. Here's what it being well married does. Uh, when I could when I could give that up and just say I still travel, <laughs> you know, and and make it work on the on the actual realities of it that make it okay for him when I'm gone. So oh. so instead of resisting that we can't do that anymore, it it was a matter of figuring out what what was best for us in terms of what I could do and make it okay or make it help it be okay. And that's and that's a that's a lightweight part. Uh-huh. There's there's uh-huh. other there are other weights uh in this resistance and insistence. Yes. Business. So yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Sue, that was so, so profound. I, I love this. We're only on our first question and already there's so much here. This is that was really beautiful. Yeah. So, so Kim, same question to you. What have you already been practicing that's helping you age zestfully? Well, I'm, I think I'm right smack dab in the middle of trying to figure it all out because for, for multiple reasons, one, my life is not in any way, shape or form what I thought it would be in my mid fifties. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I lost my husband when I was 48 and I never imagined myself single in my mid fifties and in doing life by myself. And, um, and so, so that's been an adjustment because talk about resistance. I had a really hard time selling our home once my youngest daughter graduated from high school, but I knew I needed to, to move forward. But that was, I resisted the heck out of that. And, um, and so the introspection that I mentioned earlier, I'm smack dab in the middle of it. Like, who am I? So my youngest daughter is graduating from college this weekend. Mm-hmm. And that sends me into a, a whole new era in my life, right? Where I'm not really, they're all adults now and she has a college degree and she's going to get her, you know, adult job and, and she already has it lined up. And so that, that's, that's yeah. what I'm doing right now. I, I need to get way better at a lot of this aging. I really do. Um, the, you know, looking older, um, being who you really and truly are. That's something I've struggled with in my life of being a kind of a people pleaser and sort of a chameleon. I, it's like a blessing and a curse that I can really can be in any room and yeah. I'll bring myself to where I need to be in the room. Like I could go to a black tie event at the white house, you know, and I could go hang out with people on the farm and anything in between <laughs> and kind of fit in. But that's, that's what I've, I'm realizing now in my fifties where's that piece where you just are steadily who you are, you know? So anyway, that's it. Introspection. And I'm trying to figure this out. I think Sue is going to be my new personal coach. I'm going to call her (laughs) after this. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you, Kim, because I think this is part of it. Like one of the things that I love about this topic is it's for everybody, right? I mean, I remember, and I recently wrote an article about this, that I have some best friends 25 years ago, we were looking at photos and, oh, look how cute we were then. I wish we still looked like, and we noticed it back then. And then, I mean, we were like, now I look at us, I'm like, oh my God, we were babies then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, the reason I say that is it's like, you know, it, it happens for everyone, this sense of, you know, obviously the awareness of aging and how we're changing and the resistance. And so I'm super grateful, Kim, that you jumped in when we were like, let's just do a panel about this. So yeah. And Brenda, what about you? What What do you think that uh, what's been happening in your life that's helping you age zestfully? Hmm. Well, I do my morning intentions. And like, uh, I would say this calendar year, Like some of them were about like my knee problem. I never had any problem before, but like for whatever reason, I was, I started walking like in the last couple of years, I started walking more. I started out just like around the block and then I got to three miles and then I pushed it like one day even more and my knee was kind of sore. And then when I was done, like my knee was like really mad at me. So 
I'm dealing with like a knee and mobility issue for like the first time. And I, I didn't take it seriously. And then like, you know, I realized like I need to, I actually need to go to the doctor and like find out what has to happen. So like that sort of grounded me and like forced, I mean, I, I don't mean grounded as in like, you know, centering. I mean, grounded as in like, you know, less mobility, it hurts to walk. So like, I've just been dealing with that and dealing with that. And like, it sort of got me down for a little bit, like a um, couple months ago, but like I'm rounding the bend with it. And so, you know, I, I it's hard to accept like that that's hard to accept like you know so i um so I'm, I'm having to like just realize like okay you know um gosh darn it you are getting older but like be as mobile as you can while you can and and then like that then the part of the part of the self care that is actually like physical stuff you yeah. know like um my uh, doctor said you might not be, you might not know how to walk, like, which is a funny thing to hear. Uh, and they say, <clears> you might be walking wrong. And that's like, what's causing it. So like, I'm going to have to go to a physical therapist and learn how to walk. Um, what, so, but anyway, I remain hopeful. I'm going to like, figure it out and deal with it. But like, just be as mobile. Like, I feel like that's, you know, zestful aging means like, However, you can be mobile, be as mobile as you can be as long as you can, as much as you can. Wow. I love that. I love that. I, um, what I was thinking for myself about, you know, mobility is a huge piece for me. And, mm -hmm. and I realized that we don't, we don't actually have full control over that, but we do have some, you know, things that we could do, like you're saying, you know, be as mobile as you can be. Mm -hmm. And I, I longed to dance for so many years of my life. And this combines the sort of mindset of be who you want to be, Kim. Um, and finally, in my late 40s, I started taking dance lessons and my beau and I started going to dance. And dance to me feels like it, it covers both the, the mobile part, but also the mindset. Like when I'm dancing, I feel like I could be 10 or I could be 20 or I could be 70 or, you know, it's just, it feels that sort of ageless to me. So that's been a huge thing for me. And I, I just love the way that I feel. So that's a big one for me. And the other thing that I think I talked about this on another Heart Wisdom panel, but I, I went to the Edwardian Ball with my boyfriend mm -hmm. uh, last year, and I, I wore a pink wig. And <laughs> allowing myself to have that kind of, we did kind of a steampunk and it was it's someone I'd always wanted to be. I'd always had that girl in me, but when I was younger, I was way too repressed to ever let her out. And so I think, Kim, that speaks to what you, I know, is a big thing for you about aging, like that real like self-expression piece. Yes. I remember those pictures. From oh, you you guys, I remember that when you guys went to that ball. Yeah. So yeah. that's a piece of it too, right? And I, I'm a firm believer, this is what I tell myself, which is that, you know, all those parts that didn't get to come out when I was a young girl, like, you know, that a lot of people lived as teenagers, you know, they can find ways to get expressed now. I don't have to be like, oh, you're too old, you know? So it's what I've always admired about older women when I was young, when I was 30, young, you know, it is I used to think, oh man, when you're old, you can just do whatever you want because you don't care. Well, guess what? 30 year old self, you can always do whatever you want. <laughs> But I was so hung up on just self-conscious and what will people think and this and that. But when I see older women with pink hair, okay, like they color their hair pink or they get tattoos or whatever their self-expression is, I'm like, yes, that word repressed that you use. I, I mean, that's one word that I would use for, you know, my younger self just, oh gosh. Yeah. I like, I'm ready to, I don't even know what it is. Let my freak flag fly somehow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Somehow. Kim, did you, in fact, I think this is a good segue. Did you, I think you brought us a quote that you wanted to share. Yeah. 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 I, so, so this is a quote by Carl Jung. And I, I love this quote. The privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. 
And I think we spend so much time. We I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for any of you. <laughs> you might, might not have struggled with this, but I think I spent so much of my adult life being who people needed me to be for them and kind of almost in, in feeling proud of that. Like feeling, you know, being feeling pride around being a good caretaker, a good nurturer, a good wife, a good mom, a good, you know, showing up for people doing and, um, so now I think it's, it's like, it's like good news, bad news, because I think, oh, why am I just now starting this? But at least I'm starting. I think at the age of almost 57, I need to figure out who the heck I actually am, um, you know, and, and, and just be that stop. I want to stop. It's one of the things I loved about my husband more than anything. He literally did not care what pe- people thought of him. And that's just such a, a cool quality, I think. So that's, that's one of my intentions with this work, this aging work. <laughs> Kim, do you have, I can't help but just want to ask you this, and you may not have an answer, or maybe too personal, but is there like one tiny thing you could share with us of like this person who wants to come out and play? Inside of me? Yeah. Something about the person inside of yeah. me that just wants to come out and play? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's all kinds of things that light me up. When you talked about dancing, I'm a former dancer. And so I've always, mm -hmm. and so I've always thought someday I'm going to do ballroom dancing because I think I could kick some ASS on the ballroom (laughs) dancing floor. And, but I don't do it. I just talk about, I don't do it. Why? Well, I don't have a partner. Well, you know what I mean? Like that voice inside your head. It's like, I don't know. Um, Something I don't, I, off the top of my head, I, I just to, stop caring so much about how people see me or what anyone will think. And I'm up against it right now in my own life with my business, because I've had, I can't tell you how many people tell me you need to get out more. You need to be in front of the camera. You need to have tons of content out. You need like that. And I know I need to, and I keep not doing it. Why? Because the lighting isn't right. The camera isn't right. I don't know how to, I don't know how to edit the video. I, 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 I have a lot to say, but how will I be received? And mm-hmm. I just, oh my gosh, how much I want to step out of all of that and like, just do it. Yeah. It's a very exciting moment. I can feel it for you. And I, I, I'm just wondering, Sue or Brenda, did you, did you, was there anything in that you wanted to respond to? Yeah, there, there was. Um, the, the beauty I think of, of living a long time is that there are, lots and lots of us's uh, and at the space at, sometimes it the us that's really necessary and important is the us that takes care of other people but but then there's this whole this whole parade of people that we get to express over over the years and i i wanted to go back actually to the what when older women just do stuff cuz they don't care anymore I and repressed and suppressed. I love to flirt now. I never flirted before I was 80. It was just too, you know, risky or was leading somebody on or, oh my God, you still do that in Missouri. And um, so (laughs) I don't, I just love it now. And it's so much fun. And people are very receptive to it. I mean, I, I flirt with a lot of people, women and men. But, but that's just that freedom that sort of unfolds as we move along. So when you're looking for who you are, it's, it's who is authentic and appropriate and a hell of a lot of fun right now. Because it'll maybe be somebody a little different tomorrow or you'll add, you know, until you just have this whole array of, of people you are and aspects oh. that you that you celebrate and bring out. Like the, yes, Brenda. <laughs> she raised her hand so nicely. <laughs> I, feel, I feel called to say that I know who Kim Colgrove is and she's a woman that's doing extremely important work and really helping people that are struggling with, um, you know, um, post-traumatic stress and, and that like, I, that is, 
you are many, many things like a mom, a writer, like a fun person um, and like so many things. But like to me, like, you know, like you, you have like this sacred duty that you're doing. And I feel like I know, I know who you are. I see you. Oh, well, thank you. I love this. I was just about to say, and this is great because, you know, not to not to put all the spotlight on you, Kim, but let's just as I'm going to do it for a second, because I was about to say, I see this woman who is so curious. You know, it's like one of the things like all those other labels aside, right? Like one of the things I've loved about you through the years getting to know you. Is this like the curiosity you're bringing today? I can't wait to learn from Sue, you said, you know? I can't wait to have this conversation and emailing me, like I'm just looking at this video about aging. I'm thinking about this, like that to me, that's like how to age zestfully. One of the ways is to stay curious. Stay, stay curious, and yes. And I have, I know I've, I've communicated with you a lot about this. <laughs> Thank you for being so open to all of that. I get fired up. I mean, I do, I, I, it's very easy for me to become super passionate about something if I have a belief or an opinion about it and this whole aging thing. And so what sparked it for me was women and aging and looks and the pressure to look younger than you are, the societal mm -hmm. pressure. I mean, that kind of sparked it. Um, and I think, once you told your story, I think it might have been in a heart wisdom when you told the story about you and your girlfriends being very young and looking at pictures of yourself even younger and saying, oh, gosh, look, how, you know, I think that kind of that was, was what sparked and why I reached out to you to say, gosh, we should talk about this. But yeah, so I get real like I could get on my soapbox real quick and easy about these things. And um, I mean, and that's what happened with me with my book and the work that I do is once I realized, oh, my gosh, this is really a problem and someone needs to do something. I'm like, I'll do something. And then now that women are feeling all this pressure to have all this work done um, or if they have work done, they get pressure from the natural agers to not do it. And I guess so just to wrap this opinion up is how about if we all age in the best way for ourselves and we all leave each other alone about it and just support each other? Like if you want to get work done and you and you look, you were the same age and you look 20 years younger than me, then that's that's great. And if you want to age naturally and you're never going to do a thing, then that's great. But why don't we all not criticize each other and instead just embrace and say, however you age is okay now. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much more important things to like think about, like, you know, feeding children, uh, hungry children and hungry people and making sure kids don't get shot when they go to school. There's so much more important things to think about. Like, yeah, we need to mind our own, own aging business, but like be <laughs> inspirational and encouraging to others. Yeah, he, it would, no matter which way they go. Mm -hmm, right. right. And what I love, Brenda, about what you just said, this is just my experience, but and I think if there was the sort of acceptance that Kim is talking about, like if our if our idea of beauty is is someone feeling joyful in who they are and how they live their life, for example, that's my idea of beauty. Let's just say that were true, then it seems like it would free up a lot of energy for us each to maybe focus on some of these things like, you know, that you're talking about, you know, the school mm -hmm. shootings and the feeding people and the climate and the whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know. So what do you think? I think acceptance is one of the major roads to everywhere. Um, I think it's, it's, Boom. It, it builds a, a bridge between people. It, it creates a path to uh, kindness I, I just think acceptance is a huge A and um, it brings peace of mind and heart. And if we could add, add acceptance and kindness together, and if we could do that, or the more we can do that, starting with us, you know, no matter where we are and no matter whether we're a natural ager, I'd never heard that, or a, or a surgical ager, um, <laughs> Who, who just acceptance and kindness it's it's the road to connecting and without the connecting and that's why i'm so heavy duty into the feminine because the 
the feminine energy in all of us, all, all of us, is a connecting energy. It, it is an accepting energy. It's a it's a sacred space energy. And you just, there's a, not a lot of sacred space it, it, that we see in the media and and that we experience in the school shootings. I mean, you know, you could and and all of that kind of stuff. So that I think is a is a real key, Kim. I think the acceptance is a is a real key. Yeah, and you know, Sherry, another thing we talked about. So I'm I'm looking at Sue. I'm listening to her. I'm I'm very drawn to everything that you say. Um, and I think one of the reasons is I was very, very close uh, to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very curious about women in their 70s and 80s and 90s who are full of life and vibrant and, and positive and, ha and like, I want to learn from you, Sue. I love listening to you. And um, my grandmother, I loved her. I was very close with her, but she could not wait to be a senior citizen. <laughs> um, like couldn't wait for that AARP card. And then, and then liked to be, Call, would call herself elderly way before she was elderly. And that was just, I mean, that just, she was a different generation, you know, but she was, she seemed very old. I look back now, she seemed old in her sixties. You know, she seemed, you know, I was young, but if I look at me now at 57, I look at her at 57. So, so I'm very drawn to women in their seventies through nineties who are vibrant. And I think um, there are a lot of differentiators women like Sue, she's written, she's curious, she's wise, she travels, she, you know, y y so in the, in the, when we started, first started talking about, I'm going to bring her on to a point now, we talked about the, the maiden, the mother and the crone like that, you know, that's that story. And I'm not sure when in our Western society that we sort of disempowered the crone and the crone energy or that we Mm. Uh, because there was a time when we revered our elders, you know, it, generational living. And then I don't know, some, something happened in, in there. Um, but the maiden learns from the mother and the mother learns from the, the crone or the older, you know, woman that's past childbearing years. And that's where I am now. I'm like moving from mother to crone. And I want to, and crone sounds like a terrible word, but it's not. It's just an, an elder, just a wise, you know, an elder. And so I want to make sure I'm paying attention to women like Sue, because I want to be in my eighties and, 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 and full of life and happy. And, and, and I think learning and writing and being creative and traveling and having friends and staying curious, like you said, that, that these are all components. Um, and I think we have to throw the whole, like, what do you look like? Keep it up with the Joneses and all that, like just toss all that out. Yeah. I, I, th I think there's more than with than maiden mother crone. I, I've slipped in somebody in you guys' age group, and and I named her the wisdom gatherer. So maiden mother wisdom gatherer crone, and that's what I'm hearing from from you that you're that you're gathering now. You're you're free to gather, and oh. and and make your way to the crone dome in in a wonderfully exciting uh, learning time. So my computer keeps turning itself off. But Oh, that makes me a little teary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I tried and tried and tried to find what to make just one word, because it would be better, maiden mother crone, but but wisdom gatherer seems to to catch what I remember of that of those years. Mm. where the kids were up and gone and and we were doing work and learning new stuff and but we weren't yet crones and nor 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 was it time to be you know yeah you said you no. didn't write until you were about 45 is that what I started saying? writing when I was 45 but it didn't come out till I was like 47 or so yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I um, just wanted to say that um, this reminds me that like I met at a writer's conference a couple, um, I think it was actually pre-COVID and then she reconnected with me last month, but she is a, a sociologist and a scholar about aging and she's been doing a study, a very deep study of like women and aging and um, she's um 
and I'm, I mean, you know, maybe the book is like two years down the road or something, but she contends that uh, women, like usually starting 50 or something like that, that they enter this phase, which can be, um, you know, 20 years or longer. And it's the power phase. It's like the women's power phase because like, you know, maybe the kids finally did go to college or graduating from college or, or whatever, or you've taken care of everybody in your family and your, you know, your spouse and your children and your neighbors and everyone. And then you've tended to everything that needs to be tending, include, including your own job or whatever. But then you can like just sort of hone in and like tap into your mission and like why you're on the planet and those are your power years. And like, um, I mean, it's an exciting project. Um, and like, you know, there's nothing really more to say about it, except that I, I think that like when it comes out, like, you know, I'm hoping it really makes an impact and just sort of opens is another opening up to thinking about aging for women. Ooh, yeah. I love that. But I, when she was talking about it, I was, you know, thinking to myself, like, yeah, I'm kind of in the power phase. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, to acquire books, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I see you in the power phase. I mean, to, to be part of that goes back again to what Kim brought in, which is to me, it's it's that like speaking what's true for us and not, I mean, I was, um, Kim, very much the same, like, as you described, right? I always would describe myself as a chameleon. You know, I just was always sort of fitting in, fitting in. And there's something powerful about, um, it's one of the things that I've loved about so many of the authors here in Manga, which is that um, this is what I believe. This is what I see. This is what I know. You know, with that, it's it's exciting and powerful to hear people's, um, again, it comes back to that passion, you know, that just like Sue, when you speak, it's like, it's, I know this, I know this. And, and I just show, oh, I'm like, ooh, okay, what do you know? I wanna, I wanna hear that. Yeah. yeah, Sue speaks in a very grounded way. See, I feel like I'm transitioning into that and I, I go back and forth because when I, I've always had opinions, <laughs> you know, I'm not like a shrinking violet, I like, but I know that I've started to state an opinion or, you know, bring my, and then if I sense like, Ooh, not being well received, I would shrink away from it. And so I feel like I'm in that transition where, um, I, I won't shrink away from like, I don't have to stand on the table and like pound my fist or anything like that. But, um, that ability to speak in that grounded way, that's like, I just know what I know and I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And I, respectfully don't care <laughs> what you think about it, you know? Um, yeah, I, I want to, I want to, I'm going to be more like that. Well, so speaking of Sue, I know that you brought us something to read and all of a sudden I just thought, is this the right time for that? And I don't have to, but I will. I kind of feel well, like maybe that would be lovely. <laughs> we'll see. I, I may stagger a little bit because I sort of, to taken bits and pieces. Okay. And this is this is from the woman's book of strength, speaking to what Brenda was talking about. Okay. And it's a, a little blurb um, entitled Aging, a cumulative venture. Refusing to accept the reality of aging can leach the strength right out of us. Resistance of any kind drains energy reserves. And resistance to aging is especially unproductive for a couple of obvious reasons. One, it's a fact. Two, very few of us are hoping to speed up the alternative. Since we've been aging from day one, we might as well embrace the reality, accumulate the wisdom, and have a rewarding time along the way. It took me a long time to grow young. But at over 80, I feel younger than I did at 30. Not physically, of course, but definitely an outlook, attitude, and freedom of expression. Um, old is definitely looking and acting younger and more vibrant than it used to. And psychologically and spiritually, awareness is playing a big role in changing the view of aging. Only recently has ancient esoteric spiritual wisdom and pioneering scientific research been available to the general public. And as a result, we're much more aware of the 
body-mind connection, our inner selves, and the effect of attitude on everything. The cumulative information and understanding available in my generation alone are staggering. And then I just, I like to make it fun aging. I like to, I like to make it fun. So one of the things I did, and I'll just tell you this, is um, I, I painted a, um, a picture. I'm gonna get it, okay? Here she is. This is a copy, so it's not as good as the real picture. But this was my self-portrait. Oh! <laughs> she's, she's a dragon. And and she's got gold wings and she's got gold leaf horns and she's got a, a little uh, expression that says, just try it, buddy. And and that was and now I'm working on my I just finished my second um, self-portrait and and it's a sloth. Oh, very, it's, it's a very cute sloth, but and and she's got a little zest and wink in her eye, but uh, but it's a sloth, and and you know I I think I've kind of earned that, and there was some place I was going with that, and I can't remember it now. So that's one of the things that, yeah. You know, but oh well. So. <laughs> Uh, my friend Tamara is watching. She just did a whole big all characters. <laughs> I love Sue's self portrait dragon. <laughs> We've got some clapping and some hearts and confetti all happening for that. It was I, I agree, Tamara. That was amazing. Well, and you know the thing about it is, it was that even though I'm I should I, I should that's not a good word at all, but I I would have preferred to be over it earlier that. Just try it, buddy. Attitude was a long time coming, a long time coming, mm. and and it still makes a difference. You know, I'm, if if somebody tries it and I don't like it, then I still have to be very. I don't have to be, but my natural inclination is mediation. I mean, that, that's just my natural being. So I, I was laughing because something was going on. Oh. Okay, so we were talking about aging beautifully and zestfully and everything and and happily in the last two days I've just been a bitch. So oh. uh, and uh, and it made it made me laugh. I oh, Sue. So. You always do that. You I wrote a letter, I mean I wrote a book about marriage and we almost got divorced. I mean it was just it was just one of those things. Um so anyway, but it made me laugh and I was I was riding down to go to a friend's house. And I was talking to myself, of course, and and someone who shall remain unnamed. And I said, okay, I'm going to be nice just because I'm nice, not that you deserve it. Oh! And, and that and that kind of, that's the kind of yes. awareness that when I, I think is coming into your power, Brenda, to, for me to say, I am just a nice person. It doesn't matter. I'm probably always going to do that because that just feels better to me that's just you know i love the dragon i love the dragon but she's not gonna spit fire at you she she might send out a little flame and say look at that please but i don't want to <laughs> hurt you because that's me yeah but just who i am and i don't feel good if i go you know full bore and i almost gave you the finger <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so anyway um yeah so, so making aging fun has has helped me well and sue let me just say because this feels like a moment of i want to appreciate you because i've also been privy there was another time i think we were supposed to talk about joy or something and you were like i'm in a rotten mood you know and, but the way, the way that you do it is with joy which is part of, I think, who you are, right? Like you just did it here. Well, yes, and the the way I also do it eventually now, finally, is with gentle self-compassion. Uh, knowing, being honest, yes, I am grumpy, but, but being very, we've just come through a very hard time, very hard in on on um many levels and and i just said to that me 
she said, oh, you know, darn it, you have been like a damn saint for quite a while now. It's okay. This makes sense yes. that you don't feel great right now. And um, and in that in that acknowledgement and in acceptance, there you go. Yes. It's acceptance. There you go. You know, just accepting. Then it's able to dissipate. And and we don't have a lot of time, but but I think that part of why I was in a bitchy mood is the grief surrounding the changes that are and some of the circumstances that are going on in my life. And and um, they were they were um, draining, flushing the lines. There was this huge truck, and the water was spewing out of the out of the um, fire hydrant. And um, and I thought, you know, that's what grief does. That that's and I was sitting right in it at that time. Now I'm not a big crier, so I wasn't doing a lot of crying, but but still the acknowledging. And the accepting of the feeling as appropriate, and um, and not the acting out there, the, not a, not an acting out, um, except by myself, you know. Then then not an acting out at something or someone, but but just letting the grief flow. And it's like flushing the lines. Mm. So I'm so grateful that you came back. I love this. I feel like we're doing like a labyrinth walk right now. Like that's sort of my experience. Like, like we, we were talking a little bit about grief, I think even before we went live and then you brought up, you know, the necessary grief, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many things that are being lost at any stage of our life, really. But, but especially I think in, in our- Well, and changing. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Mm -hmm. Lost and changing, right? Lost and mm -hmm. changing. And, and I'm just so glad you brought it back because for me, when I say um, even the word celebrate, I include in the word celebrate grief, right? Mm -hmm. It's to me, it's um, so aging zestfully. I just wanted just to make sure I pointed that out. To me, it's not just, again, like all about the dragon, right? It's, it's like when you said, which I love, I wrote it down. I'm glad so I can remember it. There are lots of us's who get to parade through our lives. And some of those us's are necessarily grieving and some of them are necessarily bitchy or angry. And part of, to me, the zestful part is allowing it to come through us. That's at least for me. I'm curious what you guys think. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I think all of us are of generations where girls and women were taught to be nice and be polite and be kind and be, you know, those, those things. And so maybe some of us uh, felt like some of the emotions were inappropriate or ugly or something like that. I've been guilty of that for sure. Um, and not letting some of my us's, <laughs> not letting some of my pieces, you know, uh, repressing them, repressing them, holding them in. Um, and now I live by myself and I'm doing all this introspection and my youngest is, and so now I'm, I'm starting to yesterday, I was taking a break and I sat on my couch and something that's going on in the background of my life popped up and I felt, um, overwhelmed by emotion and I got a little bit teary and traditionally I would be like, stand up, dust yourself off, move on. You're like that. And I thought, Hmm, I need to sit here for a minute. Like I feel I'm going to let myself cry for a second. I think I need to cry. These that all that that's, that's new to me. I, I spent all my adult life um, being probably toxically po positive, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, encouraging, you know, my kids and everyone around me just to look at the bright side. And there's always a silver lining of like it's too much. I overdid that. And um and when Sue said, I'm not much of a crier, I, I think I, d I repressed a lot of tears in my adult life too. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, this, this power period that you guys were talking about this fifties, sixties, you know, whatever this is where you come into this power. And I think it can go all the way to the day you take your last breath. Once it kicks in, <laughs> you know, once it kicks in and, and then something else someone said about not, Oh, not so letting yourself feel what you feel and become what you're going to become all of that, but not taking it out on other people. So you can, 
you know, I can like figure out who, who am I really? And I, I want to live really authentically. Um, but that doesn't mean I have to like come out of my house in like assless chaps with both middle fingers up. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it doesn't have to be that. Cause I think sometimes <laughs> people take, take it so far to one end. Like I've been so repressed and now I'm just gonna be like, you know, whatever, go, go completely crazy. Um, so, yeah. So I liked what you said about that, Sue. Like, and you, would you say a minute ago, like you almost. I, yes. Gave, gave you yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the word for me, I think that, that it kind of describes um, life now is authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in good company, because uh, Jane Fonda was on the cover of people to this week with uh an article saying the reason she thinks she's um, aging well and happily is that she's aging authentically. Or she oh. now she's probably not in the natural aging group, but uh, she she admits that completely. But yeah. but that and that really struck me because I I probably at this age feel more authentic than ever ever, which is which really does it which really is the wing wind under my wings i i feel like i don't anymore have any shoulds about who i should be i just just live out of who i know myself to be now and that that may be different tomorrow or the next day or it when circumstances change for me which they will yeah uh, yeah yeah I, I love, gosh, again, I just feel like we keep circling around it because there's these different points, right? There's these, and, and I feel like I just want to come back again because the the looks piece or the, you know, I'd never heard that either aging. So it's aging naturally or surgically is what Sue said. <laughs> but what I, what I see for myself and what I've talked to my friends about these is that so much of it has to do with the why behind it, you know, like, and a, a very gentle example. I have a friend who she's always worn, she's beautiful. She's drop dead gorgeous. She's, she's one in the article, Kim, that I was talking about. She's always been drop dead gorgeous, but not seen it. And she's often worn makeup because to cover her flaws, you know, and we've had so many conversations about makeup, like some people, I, I've never worn makeup, but I'm starting to get interested in it. Like sort of like theater, like, oh, how fun would that be if I knew how to do my eyes the way that somebody did them for the, the ball I went to? But it's like looking at the why behind things like, you know, do are we doing whatever it is to alter our looks? Because it's fun and it makes us feel good and we like, you know, we like it or because we feel like we're not good enough, which I feel like, it, you know, we could be on the outside the same thing and, and again, it's not for anyone else to judge, but those are the questions I ask myself. You know, am I doing this because it's fun and I just want to experiment with whatever, you know, or am I feeling like I need to look different, you know, for the world? One of the things that I, I think um, I wanted to sort of point out to it, it, anything that we we do that's fun or just comes out of, of us because it sounds like the right thing helps us be present mm. um, and one of the things that we can always do i i was trying to get into a low cabinet yesterday and i was talking to the dog and saying i'm gonna have to get down on the floor and i remember when i used to be a cheerleader and getting down on the floor was not the same process as it is now and um but but what I can still do is if I am present and authentic with myself, I can be present to other people too. Mm. And that is a gift that I, I hope I can retain until I take my last breath. Because you don't have to get on the floor. You don't have to be able to walk three miles. You can be present no matter what. And if you can sit in authenticity and be present, and part of that presence would be saying, I'm not in a place where I can do this right now. I'm not in a place I can be present right now um, because ABC, but I will be, I'll come back to that. And so I think that in terms of service, 
one of the things that happens when you age is that there aren't so many ways you can be of service, but, but we can always do that. So I just wanted to tell you, Lori just jumped on. Hi, Lori. I know we've got this, we're streaming at several different places. So I know my comments aren't going to everybody so you don't see them, but we love them. And Lori just said how much she really appreciates what you just said about presence. And I wanted to make sure that, that you heard mm -hmm. that and to thank Lori, because that is so true, right? Like, and, and in my experience with presence to, to carry that forward a little bit, um, that's where the aging gratefully part comes full force for me, right? Because like what you just said, Sue, um, you know, there are lots of things I can't do and maybe that I never could do, but, or maybe I can't do because of my age or whatever, but, but to get present in the moment and to be fully aware of the many abundances that are here and get my attention off of, you know, whatever that can't is, or, you know, no longer the loss or the, it can change everything. Brenda, what are you thinking? You have a, you have a fun smile on your face. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not even sure why, but like Peace Pilgrim started coming into my mind a few minutes ago. I don't know, maybe because she was like an exemplar of like um, a woman going into her power years. And and um, I mean, I'm sure most people like listening and, and here like know who she is, but she was started like her little activism, her little solo walking activism just wearing t-shirts saying peace pilgrim and I'm on the back it was like more writing about the importance of peace and and um and so she just came into my mind uh because I feel like she she didn't start her thing she didn't start her peace activism until she was much until she was older and like she didn't ask for anybody's help she just made the t-shirts and started walking and then she eventually got attention and she became like the you know a movie was made about her and many books and everything like that but I think that like what I liked about it was is that like my sense about her from reading reading about her um is that she just she she decided that like peace world peace <laughs> um was like the most important thing and like if all she could do was like you know, walk down the road wearing a t-shirt that promoted peace. And that's what she did. But she walked many, many, many miles. I mean, I think like in some cases, like she practically walked across America and like in other places. And she just flickered into my mind as like an exemplar of a woman in her power years, like picking her mission and being truly, truly, truly authentic. And just by her singular small action, like inspiring millions. Hmm. <laughs> I was having a peace pilgrim moment. <laughs> well, I love it. And when you just had your, your peace pilgrim moment took me, which is just another interesting, like, um, there's a, there's a nun that, that encouraged my mother to read her mother. My grandmother never read ever, ever, except for something like the Inquirer, or those like, you know, those kinds of things. But this, this nun, she encouraged my mother. She said, you know, always carry a book and you'll never be bored. And that's passed down. You know, I remember that from my childhood, going to the bookmobile and going to the library with my mom. And of course, when my son was born, I would always say to him, you know, always carry a book and you'll never be bored. And that nun probably never knew that that one singular mm -hmm. kindness, that one singular, just like you said, Brenda, like that one singular, I don't know if she ever thought like, oh, this is my mission that I'm going to inspire an entire family for the rest of their generations to read. But I just love that, that you brought up the peace program and that it, it, that dropped, Ida was her name. Ida dropped into my mind because it's like the impact that we're capable of you know, when we're truly authentic. I think there's something about that, right? And and as mm -hmm. we're aging, as we're looking at, like Kim was asking, like, oh, what, you know, what is the me that wants to come out? It's like, um, oh, do we even know the potential of how we can impact the world? And uh, that's what came up for me, Ida, Sister Ida. Yeah, I feel uh, called to say one other thing, even though I know the clock is ticking, is that 
another one of our fantabulous canary uh, mango 82 year old genius women writers and world changers is karen casey the great karen casey and uh from editing her books like and her new books like uh what really comes through is she just kept saying peacefulness being at peace <clears throat> being at peace even inside yourself uh is like the most important thing and so i, I was sort of thinking well actually that's what sue was talking about like um being authentic and accepting and and stopping resistance and what Kim was talking about, like coming into your true self. <clears throat> so like aging is like a, an acceptance of aging and, and aging with gratitude and grace or whatever you want to say is like a way of like becoming, being the peace you want in your life at oh. peace within yourself. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to get there. <laughs> I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. Brenda, that was gorgeous. That was yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. I don't have anything to say on top of that. I don't know, you know, if um, Sue or Kim, if there was anything you wanted to end with, but wow, that's beautiful. Be the peace that you want. Be the peace that you want in yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I will say something. I think women especially are really good at holding paradoxes. And it may seem like a real paradox to hold peace as well as everything else now, but I really do believe it's possible. I think you can you can hold grief and you can hold the zest and happiness. You can hold the peace. You can hold the sadness. So I think we I think we do it well. So that I agree. And I have to quote you again because this I just really want to get this in my mind. Those many us's that parade through our lives, I see, I see sometimes 10 or 20 of them in a day, you know, so it's like letting mm -hmm. them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what you're speaking to, like letting ourselves have that fluidity and the holding of the paradoxes, you know, boom, 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 the, the grief, the joy, the sadness, the anger, they can all get along. We can dance with them all. We can dance with them all. <laughs> I love you, beautiful women. I'm so this great. is great. Thank you. I know. Wasn't it yeah. great? I know. It's a great conversation. Sue, thank you for getting me thinking um along the lines of um dropping the um insistence and resistance. I'm gonna be thinking about that a lot. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. It's working for me. Yeah. Well, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> okay, please do. And please do. I really do mean that. I'd love I'm, a work, to. I'm a work in progress. And I think resistance, I've had a ton of resistance. Uh, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you. I might get us together for a little reunion and uh, we can we can do a check in and see what other new things as we've all aged, maybe in six months <laughs> or a year. And then we can all talk about what we've seen. How's that? That'd be great. That would be yeah. good. That'd be great. Thank you, Sherry, as usual. Yeah, oh, it's such a delight. Yeah. Yep. Such a delight. Thank you all. Thank you to those of you who joined in today. I loved your comments. I loved seeing you in the chat. Hi, Ann. I saw you just joined us. Um, we'll be here. We're here twice a month. And so keep an eye out in Facebook or LinkedIn for our promotions for the next Mango Publishing panel. Always a delight. Mwah. And thank you, Brenda, for being the one who brought us all together. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> She's the best midwife. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so many things. Yeah. I agree. I concur. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye. Publishing. Mm -hmm.